Hello and welcome to this, the third video in our series looking at Google Plus Hangouts on Air for broadcasting. My name is Stephen Prichard and I'm editor at Audio Video Pro. And as I said, this is the third episode in this series. And in this brief video, we're going to be looking at using a vision mixer to produce a Hangout on Air with multiple cameras. Now, in the previous sessions, we've looked at the basic tools that you have within Hangouts on Air, how to set them up, and some of the things that you can do within the Hangout toolbox. We've also looked, in the second part of our series, specifically at how you can use the functionality within the Hangout itself to link together multiple cameras and to create the impression of a multi-camera shoot. There are some pluses to this because it means that you don't need any specific hardware. You just need computers, even perhaps with a webcam, and the ability to switch between them using the interface on Hangouts on Air itself. That's the upside. On the negative, though, it does mean that you need one computer per Hangout. You can't do that with multiple cards within a Hangout. You have multiple capture cards within a PC, for example. You would have to have one computer taking up one seat for each camera that you want in the Hangouts, and that's what we demonstrated last time round. The other issue with that is it takes up quite a lot of bandwidth, because each of those seats in the Hangout is potentially three megabits per second. So what are the alternatives? Well, one of the alternatives is to use a software switcher. And you can actually download a free software switcher if you have a YouTube Live account. But it has some limitations on functionality. Or you can pay for the full version of basically the same software, which is called Wirecast from Telestream. And there are another, um, a couple of other software options out there in the market as well. Apologies if um, this isn't as fluid as you'd expect, but the auto queue isn't working today, so I'm doing this from memory. Um, but of course, software puts another load on your computer CPU, and uh, potentially it's another thing to go wrong. And there are those limitations with the number of capture cards. Now, we will look at Wirecast in a future review, and we'll look at what it is capable of. But in essence, you're limited by the number of cards you can fit in a PC. So that's no criticism of the software. It's just that most computers don't have multiple cards to support multiple video inputs. And of course, if you've got a laptop, you are limited to the interface ports that either Apple or the other manufacturer choose to give you. And in the case of, say, for example, Thunderbolt ports, you're lucky to get more than two on a laptop computer. So how do you get around that problem? Well. The solution that we've gone for here, and what we're going to look at today, is a hardware vision mixer. Now, once again, that divides into two. You can either go for the traditional hardware vision mixer from the likes of Data Vid, from Panasonic, from Roland. And again, that has a control surface and usually all the inputs in one box. Or you can go for the modular approach, which is the approach adopted by companies such as um, New Tech with their TriCasters, or as we're using here, Blackmagic Design with its ATEM switches. Now, what that does is it takes some of the intelligence and puts it into the computer. So in the case of the ATEM switch, for example, that interface on the computer replaces a hardware control surface that you would normally use. On the New Tech system, on the TriCaster, they go a step further, and actually the entire system is based around an industry standard PC with some very specific additional pieces of hardware in it. But that does enable you, in both cases, to bring down the cost, but to retain the useful features, such as professional inputs. So for example, the camera that you're seeing me on now is streaming via HD SDI, currently set to 720p, because that is the option for Google. But it can go up, in the particular case of the one we have here in our studio, up to a 4K vision mixing stream, you would then need to down convert that for use on the internet. Because at the moment, there are no 4K streaming services available to consumers. But that may come in the future. So that's one thing. The second thing about the vision mixer, though, is it takes away the reliance on software and the reliance on, in particular, the Google Plus Hangouts environment for switching. It should give you a bit more reliability. And as I said before, it conserves bandwidth. Why does it conserve bandwidth? Because instead of sending a stream for each camera that is in the Hangout, each camera angle that you have on your set, you are just sending one stream at a time with everything mixed on the hardware side. So just to walk you through our workflow, quite simply, we have three cameras set up here. We have the Blackmagic ATEM, which is the Production Studio 4K Vision Mixer. We have, again, I've stuck with 
intensity and uh, making sure that all the software is compatible. We have a Blackmagic Intensity Shuttle USB 3 encoding card. We've actually gone for USB 3 on the Macintosh, which might seem to be an unusual combination, but there are actually good technical reasons for having um, USB 3 as well as Thunderbolts. In fact, we do have one of each, but it would potentially enable us to use that with a PC should the needs arise. And then we have a secondary computer, which in this case is actually a Lenovo Windows 8 PC, which is running the control surface for the Vision Mixer. So what I can do is if I just switch um, cameras for the minute, uh, we have a um, remote camera set up here in the studio. Uh, and um, if I just grab the remote control for this, sometimes we use this with a um, specific, we normally would use this with a specific wired uh, commander, which is a, a bit more sophisticated. But just to keep the clutter under control here, uh, I'm going to zoom this in on, um, on my set here and uh, just flip over to the camera. I'm using the so this is set up on my screen as, a, as camera 7 at the moment. So if I flip onto camera 7, the nice thing about this particular piece of uh, equipment, you may have seen this in some of our uh, videos that we've done before, is it does allow me to um, refocus the camera. So I'm now looking at the uh, remote camera. It allows to refocus the camera on a different subject whilst I'm operating a Hangout on my own. Um, so you know you may not want to do that in sort of live vision for an interview situation. But for example, for a demo, it would be quite useful. So for example, if I just... Uh, zoom in a bit here, you can see our um, chroma key background, which I'll come back to in more detail. And I'll bring that background. And you can also see all the equipment that we have here on the desk. So I'll just zoom out for you there for the moment. And you'll see that I have a consumer HD screen there. And you can see the back end of the black magic design box there as well. And again, I can just tilt that in. You can see there's quite a lot of cabling going into the back of that for the uh, three uh, SDI feeds that we're operating. Um, if I flip around uh, once more, uh, you can see the uh, Lenovo PC here, which is acting purely for the purposes of uh, controlling the ATEM. So that's uh, connected directly to the ATEM via, uh, you may be able to see an orange uh, Ethernet cable there coming out of the back. And then I have the, uh, the Mac computer, which is actually handling the um, live stream at the moment. So just bring that into shot there, you can see that. Now, if you wanted to uh, to see this in more detail, um, hopefully we'll be able to put some stills up. But uh, what I can do, for example, is is just um, because we've got the facility to zoom in. Uh, if I just close the uh, laptop there for the minute, which is the um, the camera that's sorry, camera five. Just cut to bar. There you go. I'll go to camera six. Um, that's just the camera that's on me at the moment. Um, I'll just move the ATEM control panel around. So this isn't one of these cute laptops where you can actually uh, control the, uh, flip the screen around. But if I just turn that around um, to show you, and then if I just reach over and go to the uh, correct camera, which is in our configuration here, the camera seven, uh, what you'll be able to see there on, um, on that is the uh, laptop interface there. Again, this is running at Windows 8. And if I zoom in for you and just pan down a little bit there, It's a bit like flying a remote control plane. If you've ever tried to fly one of those drones, you have to uh, learn to do the movement slowly. Uh, I, uh, you want this right in the middle. Right, there we are. So that gives you an idea of what the ATEM screen looks like. And, and again, that is just the control surface. So you can see the, um, the red light at the top there shows me which camera I'm on. So if I, for example, switch to, um, hey, camera, you're on camera seven at the moment. If I switch to camera six, um, you will see that it will just flip back to, that's the control screen that I was trying to show you. So I was just on the wrong camera there, apologies. But um, so I'm trying to do these things um, on a kind of automated basis. So I've just zoomed in on that. And what you're seeing now is um, camera seven. And you're seeing the ATEM control service. So at the top, you've got uh, the option to go to black. You've got cameras one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And on this particular box, it is four HDMIs and it is four HD SDIs. So we are currently just using the HD SDIs. Maybe in a future uh, program, we will rig up a uh, secondary camera feed on HDMI as well. But just for the purpose of compatibility, we've got three Sony cameras here. They're all running 720p output on the HD SDI, and it allows us to use reasonably long cable runs as well. What we have found, even in a fairly small studio, such as this project studio here, where we operate out of, um, is that sometimes uh, HDMI 
signals don't reach as far as you would like. So really, if you can um, go for STI, then um, by all means, uh, that would be the better option. So that's the first option. Now, the secondary screen here, this shows you what you're showing live at the top here. The secondary screen here shows you the previews. So that would show me on my screen, for example, I've got preview seven at the moment showing, but if I flip that, uh, my preview screen goes back to, um, to camera number six, uh, which is uh, currently um, a, composite, a composite image there. And um, it also shows me uh, if I've got Kia's on as well, so I can uh, I can take some of those uh, off, for example. So that would allow me to queue up a uh, camera feed and have a look at it, and particularly useful with our robot camera here, because although for the purposes of this exercise I've attached an external Atomos Samurai to it, which we could also use to record the video, because the robotic camera doesn't have any built-in recording, um, but it acts as a confidence monitor, so I can actually see at the moment what that camera is showing you, uh, and also see that on my multi viewer. But if I didn't have that, then the preview screen would be where I would go to to, uh, to look at that. And again, I can select whichever camera I want to go up, and I can queue up the next camera. So for example, if I flip to camera five on, on here, that is currently up for our, our green screen. That is now on my preview screen. And then if I do a quick cut, then um, what will happen is you will just see that picture come in there. And that literally is our green screen studio, which we're going to move on to in a moment. But that is without the green screen in operation. So again, if I just do a quick cut, I can just quickly preview that screen. I can set the preview to the camera that I want. Now I just hit cut, and it will go back to the program feed showing you the uh, image from camera number seven, which is the robot camera, and is showing you the ATEM control panel. Now, just a very quick thing about some of the terminology here as well, because uh, you might uh, not have come across this. Obviously, if you're on broadcasting, you will have done. Um, the basics of any vision mixer are very, very similar, whether it's from Blackmagic or, uh, or any other uh, company. What you've got is a number of, uh, of feeds available. Now, in this particular case, you have a um, multi-viewer feed, and you have a program feed. So what we actually are sending out to our encoding box is the program feed. Um, so that's what you're seeing at the minute. Uh, there's also an auxiliary feed on this, which is extremely useful. Unfortunately, on this model, it is only um, SDI, HD SDI out. So it won't work out of the box with a, um, an HDMI um, device such as an HDMI projector. But again, you can get relatively low cost uh, converters for those and, and add those in. And they do, um, they do do the job. Um, again, not massively cheap at about 200 pounds. Uh, but you can then take that feed out and, for example, put it into a projector. A more common use, though, would be to take that out into something like the um, Atomos Samurai that uh, we're using here as well um, to record that. Or uh, we actually have in our system, in our uh, flight case, we actually have a separate recorder, which, again, is a black magic uh, recorder. And that's called a hyperdeck. That allows us to either play out video from an HD or a SSD. We use SSDs with it. Or indeed to record a full uncompressed video feed to the SSD. You can configure that to program feed, which is what you'll also configure it to record your actual video as it's being recorded in camera through an auxiliary without any overlays or without any chroma keying or anything like that on it. And what that would enable you to do, for example, would be to send out a version of your video without graphics on it, without logos on it, without lower thirds or astons, as they're called sometimes. Um, or, for example, just to record the chroma key image for later. So you may say, well, OK, I'm quite happy with the way that Google Plus is transmitting this at the moment. But actually, I would like to go in there and do a nicer key in post-production, maybe put some extra graphics in. You can record the auxiliary feed from your mixer, certainly in the case of the ATEM and, and pretty much all the other ones that are on the market of this type of capability. You would record that in the vision mixer, and then um, you have no overlays or anything else. It's just what we call a clean feed, and you can go in and edit that in post-production. It's great for repurposing video and doing different edits. OK, so I'm going to now um, flip back to, I will lean over and flip back to uh, my camera number six, which is the camera that is just looking at me. And uh, I'll do that in order to flip this screen round so that I've got a better idea of, uh, of what's going on there. So again, I put camera number six up on the live view, and you all should be able to see um, me now rather than the um, back of the Lenovo. Uh, and then I'll just move the camera number seven around so that we can change the angle of uh, vision there as well. So um, again, I'll just give you a, um, a studio shot. So what I'm going to, going to do now is I'm just going to give you a preview shot of our green screen set here, um, just so you've got a quick idea of what that looks like. And we're going to uh, actually flip into that in a moment and um, show you how that would look in vision, actually with a, not with this camera, with a different camera. 
Okay, so just um, to have that there in the background. So um, I'll just flip over to camera number seven for you, and there is a um, reasonable sort of close-up of our green screen, our, our um, live program feed. So you can see our green screen set there um, already. Okay, good stuff. Right, so in terms of what we can do next, I'm going to show you a couple of other little things that the Vision Mixer can do, and then I'm going to show you some of the uh, green screen capabilities. So just let me lose this remote control there. I uh, may just turn my microphone gain up a little bit as well. I'm on a, I'm on a wireless mic here, but it's not the loudest, uh, loudest thing there. There's a bit of hum coming off the ATEM box in, in the background. OK, so a couple of other basic things that you can do with a vision mixer. Admittedly, you can do a lot of this within software. You can certainly do it all in Wirecast. And you can also do uh, a good proportion of it in the uh, Google Plus Hangout software itself. But just, uh, just to show you, anyway, uh, one thing you can do is you can set up uh, various sort of background images. Um, so if I just go into the media keys at the moment, um, what I've got there and uh, what you are seeing now is a pre-created uh, pre Aston or lower third. And um, that image has been created for the studio here. So it says your guest name here, Touchdown Studio Space Teddington, because that is uh, where we are. Now, I can then put that onto the, um, onto the live image if we want. And then you would be able to see a composite image of the two. So if I flip again over to camera number six, and then uh, you want to bring the media key up as well. And it will basically, this is in media key number one. Um, sorry. Just checking, I've got the right one loaded there. Let me go back and check. Media key one, it should be. I just need to check it's gone into the right uh, the right key here. So uh, downstream key should be media key. It's set to media key two, so I just need to change that. So the touch screen is a little bit awkward for uh, for some of these things here. So um, I just put that in media key one for the moment and um, hopefully if I bring that on air you should be able to see the image. Um, so that is a composite image there. What you're seeing now is my um, background image. Um, so you're not actually seeing me at all. It gives me a chance I to uh, um, stretch my legs a little bit. It's a little bit uh, cramped in this little production corner we've, uh, we've set up here for the purposes of this demo. What you're seeing here now is the Aston overlaid on the background image on the media one. But if I now flip to um, camera number six you should, oops, that's not doing quite what it's meant to do. My apologies. I'll take that off. Um, what I'm trying to do is to show you that I can bring that up, but I've actually managed to, to mix my uh, bits here up on the screen. So um, what you should, I flip back to the media again. That is the media you should be seeing as an overlay uh, on the um, downstream key. So what I need to do is to um, just change that. Um, you're seeing the right feed there. So we want to go camera number six. I'm not a Windows user, by the way, in case anyone's wondering. Habitually, I'm a Mac user, so I find these buttons a little bit, uh, sometimes a little bit awkward. OK, there we go. So um, apologies for, for doing that the long way around. But that is the um, Kia number six um, and camera number, sorry, Kia number two and camera number six uh, on air gives you a, a nice um, image. Now, this is actually set with a black bar. Um, not great for background uh, like this, but um, it works better with the, the media background that I showed you a moment ago. So again, if I flip over to uh, the media background, um, you would be able to see that. Um, on a white background, this one would work better. Normally, a white one would be better for a black background. But anyway, it's very easy to change those around and uh, to bring those on or off air. And you can also have multiple of these uh, as you, you uh, go across the screen there. OK, so um, those are very easy to set up. And again, um, I can show you those in more detail in the article that we're going to write to accompany that, because I can uh, more easily drop some screenshots in there than I can on, uh, on Google+. Let me just flip back to a camera so you're not just seeing that empty, uh, empty screen. Um, it's fairly straightforward to bring those in. On this particular mixer, you've got two. Uh, live media bays and the ability to store 20 pieces of media um, at any one time, which can be a mix of stills graphics uh, on this particular model or on the higher end models, you can do stills graphics and video. And then you can have any two of those on screen at the same time. So you can create a composite image of uh, both of those media keys if you want to. And again, it's very fairly quick to uh, load and uh, remove those as you go along. Uh, one thing is that if you're 
doing multiple shots with multiple guests and multiple titles, because you can only have two live at any one time, um, you need to be quite adept at loading the next speaker's title before you flip the camera to that person who's uh, in vision. So again, a good vision mix operator is worth their money in these type of circumstances, because it makes the whole process a lot the stress away from the producer and the camera operator. All right then, so uh, with that done, I think we should have a look at the, um, the green screen. Now, uh, what I'm going to do again is cue this up. So I've got that on my, um, I'll put camera five on my preview at the moment. So camera five um, is my preview. Um, that is my green screen at the moment. And um, currently it's not showing you anything at all very much. So if I just flip over to camera five, uh, you will see what the green screen camera is um, showing. And um, I can actually whirl my remote camera around for you uh, so you can actually see the, uh, the green screen camera that is set up there as well. So again, if I just um, let me focus in on that and you will see the position of that when I, I go to camera seven. So camera seven, that is the camera that is pointing at the green screen and uh, camera number five is actually the image that it's outputting to the Hangout at the moment. So that is all set up. Now, what I can then do is I can then um, basically key that image live on air. So again, if um, I make sure we've got the right media available to us, it will allow us to show a green screen image in the real world. So I've just done that directly on air. Probably you would do that whilst you were cutting to an external speaker or a VT, some pre-recorded video or another image. Um, but I say I've just done that on air. I can take that off air. Um, I take that off air. Um, what you're just seeing is the picture, literally just in my media key two. If I put media number one on, you are just seeing my bottom third. Again, if I put that on, you're just seeing that. So again, as you saw before, no live image from the camera at this stage. So now you're seeing just the, uh, the photograph. And then if I go back to on air, then I'm keying the two images together. Now, why can't you see any? Because it is just a chair. So you'll have to bear with me for two seconds because I'm using a wired headset, although I'm using a wireless microphone. So just let me very gently unplug myself from the, uh, the audio subsystem that we're running here. And I will just pop over to the um, chair and hopefully you will be able to see the image composed fully and um, I will continue to talk. So I'll just do a very quick check on my uh, multi-view to check that it's, so you see I'm looking away from camera at the moment. I'll just do a very quick check on my multi-view to see that you are getting a, um, a composite image. So um, obviously I am just looking now directly at the camera and the camera is showing the green screen background that is there in, um, in our set as I demonstrated a moment ago. Um, now what I can do is I can, uh, I could potentially zoom in or out on that camera. Now I've got myself set up with a background of the um, uh, Kingston Bridge, which is uh, about a couple of miles down the road from here. Uh, maybe the color balance isn't, isn't great because I've not adjusted it for my um, rather lively shirt that I decided to put on today. It looks better on. But I say that's there, and that is actually now keying live. Uh, we have got a little wash light behind at the moment, which is. Um, because these chairs are white. Now the thing is, um, I don't know if you saw. I'll, I'll just um, I'll just stand up for a second. Um, I don't know if you saw earlier, but the the chairs are actually white um, that we've got at the moment. We've got some uh, other ones on order. But if I just um, move that camera in, you can see uh, the chair is white. And um, a white chair in a green screen studio is not the best thing to uh, to use uh, because it potentially catches a what we call a spill in the trade, and that would mean that part of the chair would disappear. But I put a little bit of the chair in the shot just uh, so you could see it. And also it helps me. We were doing a, a virtual studio tour earlier on today. And one thing that I, I did was I got a colleague to set the camera up uh, quite a tight shot like that. And that meant that when I flipped to the key, all I could see was the background because there was actually nothing in the shot that was being keyed. It was just the background. And uh, what you need to do is have a little bit of a prop. So corner of the chair just helps you to uh, double check on your screen. Now, of course, if you've got a live vision mix operator working on it with you or working on a project with you, I'm not going to have that problem. But you know, I said, um, I said to my colleague, a, a mug on the table would, would have been uh, great. So the slight um, funny color at the moment is, is coming from the wash light that we've got behind us. Uh, that wash light is purely there to uh, uh, blow out the highlights of the the white chairs and stop them picking up any spill from the green. And, and um, again, it's a multicolored light, so ideally we would use one of our uh, our light panels type 
Um, in fact, I have got a small light panels light, which would be ideal for this, uh, which is a battery powered one and is powerful enough to kick the, the shadows out of the way there. But one of the things, again, with the green screen is you need the background to be as clean as possible, and then you'll get a good key. Um, hopefully that looks okay. I'm going to look back over towards the, uh, the bridge there and, and maybe see what's happening in the background there. Um, bearing in mind, this is a still image. Now, just a little thing about still images whilst um, we're on the topic. These are called plates in the trade. This was uh, taken on a compact system camera, uh, not particularly expensive one, micro four thirds, a little Panasonic camera, uh, when I was out and about um, with the kids and I was able to grab a few shots. And the only thing that we've done to make it suitable for video is we've cropped it to the 16 by 9 ratio. Um, so if you, cameras today have a sufficiently high resolution image that they're going to look quite good, whatever. The other thing you do have to think about is perspective, though. So if I were to look at my screen there, if I were to look at the top of the screen there where the bridge is, if I was to look at the other side of the screen where the river is, this was taken a few paces back from the railings that go along the river down in Kingston, and that gives you the right sort of perspective. You might even want to go into your image in Photoshop or another video editing or audio, oh, sorry, um, picture editing package and blur the image slightly to, again to create more of a sense of a depth of field. The other thing to consider, though, with the plates is you don't want to be zooming the camera in and out when you have a static background image. High-end production systems for TV studios can adjust to the camera's zoom movements or the camera's pan and tilt movements automatically, and they will adjust the green screen at the same time. On a camera like this, you can't do that. On this type of software, you can't do that. And if I zoomed in at the moment, it would have the effect of making it look as if I'd taken off and started to fly. Maybe we'll show you that in a future video but it's not a very pleasing effect. So you can do multiple cameras with green screens in a live. You need to have your shot set in a way that you're cutting from one shot to another without zooming or panning or tilting the camera, ideally. If you were doing it in post-production, you can, of course, use the cropping and uh, enlarging tools within your software to adjust the image so that the background detail zooms in again. So if I was to zoom in on the camera here, uh, you would want to see, for example, from the, the pillar of the bridge there to the tree on the other side, um, possibly just that part of the image behind my head as, as it zoomed in. And that would look a lot more natural. You can do that in post, but rotoscoping, it's quite fiddly with keyframes, but uh, it can be done. And again, you want to get hold of something like Adobe After Effects uh, to do that. But this is a live key on a single camera. It is a reasonably high-end camera. It is a half an inch camera, it's a Sony PMW 200, uh, you would get a good key off this type of camera, you would get a good key off a super 35 millimeter camera such as the, um, the Sony FS 700 if you're using the external outputs, not the internal recording because that's ABC HD, or a Canon C300 which is a very popular type of camera for this, um, or indeed a DSLR. DSLRs have lots of resolution so they are quite good for keying. Um, the cameras to avoid are the cheaper consumer type of cameras, the cameras with small chips. Third of an inch chip is just about okay, so Canon XF305, for example, Sony PMW150, or a, a JVC GYHM um, 600 or 650 would give you a reasonable quality image. But the rule for chroma keying is the higher bit rate possible for recording. You want as wide a color space as possible for your output, so you ideally want 422, uh, four, not 420, or even 444 four, four, if you can get it on your camera. Uh, and you want to have as large a chip as possible, as well as good lighting. But for a live demonstration, this works reasonably well just with the single camera there. And if I go back to uh, to the desk for, for a minute, um, you'll see me disappear. And uh, I can flip back to our camera number six, and you'll see the previous image going up on air there. So we've replaced the chroma key with uh, with just that, and I'll take the key off. So that, that keying there, by the way, um, it's just mixing, so that's now mixing me in the background rather than the, um, uh, the the background image. So we can take that off now, and you'll go back to the straight image in the camera. So that, in essence, is more or less uh, everything that I have to show you in regards to running a multi-stream video production using a vision mixer and feeding that into Hangouts on Air. Everything that we've described uh, today would also work equally well with a streaming service such as uh, U uh, YouTube Live or indeed one of the commercial um, paid for services such as Ustream or Livestream. Same principle applies. You need to get your camera inputs into the vision mixer. Then you select the camera output that you want and then you feed that into your capture card or external capture box into your computer, which is then uh, running the, um, the production. So I hope that's been of some use, and there will be a written article on Audio Video Pro 
Net shortly about this, so we've also got the two previous articles in the series if you want to find out a little bit more about how Hangouts on Air work and some of the tools that are available within the Hangouts environment itself. Uh, and uh, we'll also be producing a follow-up video and accompanying article in the next few weeks which will look at how you can use the Hangouts on Air technology to bring in guests in remote locations and also exploring some of the social media interaction that is available through this platform. It's certainly a platform we're excited about and we think it has a lot of potential to grow. So on behalf of all of us at Audio Video Pro, thank you very much for taking the time to watch. Thanks again to our host, to Touchdown Studios Base in Teddington for allowing us to use these uh, fantastic facilities. My name is Stephen Pritchard and thank you for watching.